Hey, what's up, everybody? We're here in a apartment complex in the Hollywood that they let us borrow and steal some catalytic converters out of. <laughs> with the homie Anthony Blett right here. I'm with El Gordo Mamon. Hide your catalytic converters. Look at that one right there. Has a good catalytic converter. We're about to steal some after. That was easy to take off, too. This guy brought his army. Were you in the military, though? Well, you know, my dad treated me like I was in the military. You were Puerto Rican, right? Cuban and Puerto Rican. With Cuban and Puerto Rican? Yeah. Which how you like better? <laughs> you know you're going to start fights. I, I, I can't say neither. They're like the same thing. They both like rum, the rice and beans. They both got Caribbean water. I'm with it. How'd you, how'd you feel like coming to California here? Like that? Uh, different like, Latino, different Latino, bro. No, I'm saying, I'm saying not, not to the U.S., but, no, coming, from, but coming from East Coast to yeah. West Coast, like just seeing the different ethnicity, like different Latino ethnicities, you know? You know what's wild? Being in the East Coast, like um, in New York and Miami, you don't, you don't get in touch. I had friends that were Mexican, and I was one of the few that, that had that cultural involvement yeah. because I was always boxing. Okay. So, you know, Mexico and Puerto Rico are the two countries that bring out the most champion boxers. So I always had Mexican friends, but in Miami, you got to go, like, out of your way, bro. Like, it's funny because sometimes it's like the, the joke was like, oh, it's only when the lowrider concerts come in that you get <laughs> to see where everybody's at. Because yeah. all, you, all you know is yeah, Caribbean yeah. and Colombian and Venezuelan out there. And um, coming out here, going to castings and stuff like that, yeah. Latinos, which I just, I, I just feel like I'm Latino. You speak Spanish, you speak Spanish, yeah. the same shit. They would be like, what are you? And I'd be talking Spanish, and they're like, no, but you're not Spanish. And I was like, no, you mean I'm not Mexican, I'm yeah, Cuban yeah, and Puerto yeah, yeah. Rican. And same I, thing when I was in the military, bro. Like, you meet different, obviously, people from the Dominican. You Puerto were in the Rican. military? Yeah, I was in the army. Lord, bro. Bro. So you meet, you meet. Thank you for your service. You're welcome, bro. Give me my jacket back. <laughs> 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 I don't even know that the patch you have on the, on the side, bro, is a... Sergeant, Man, I, I got the patch. Hey, look, and look how I'm No, let me tell you that patch is a sergeant major patch, fool. But I'm a major sergeant. No, that's wrong. No, that uh, that's a that's an army one. Yeah. Sergeant, no, that's army. Yeah, sergeant major. You have to be in the army like 30 years to get that shit. <laughs> this one found that shit the good way. I was taking whoopings from my dad for 30 years. <laughs> and your dad's what? Cuban or the Puerto Rican? He's the Puerto Rican. He's Puerto Rican. Yeah, five foot nine. He gets angry. He's about seven foot five. And you have siblings. Siblings. One younger brother. There's two. One younger brother. That's oh, but you have the same one from him, or is it has a different uh, parent? No, from him. But you guys, so only just two two siblings total, two or two two kids. Mm -hmm. And that's cool. what's wild, fool. Huh? That's wild. Why? What's Cause wild? Because Latino, because Latino, bro. <laughs> 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 I have four dogs. <laughs> I just tell you, you got four brothers. No, four kids. <laughs> four kids. Yeah. Damn, you just. I have. So I have, I'm the oldest from us. Supposedly, supposedly, there's an older one. That we don't know. Yeah. I've never met him, but supposedly, like, they've yeah. never, it's never been confirmed, bro. Like, never been confirmed. Uh -huh. But supposedly that there is, supposedly. I'm going to start Googling catalytic convert thieves, and I bet you'll find out what's that. But, uh, so I'm the oldest. I have my brother, my sister, and then I have a half-sister. But she's already 21. So then, uh, then my dad decided to pop out another kid. So he's the same, she's, his, my little brother's the same age as my daughter, four, eight years old. Savage, we'll see. Mexicans don't be playing, dog. But also... The good thing about our genetics is that <clears throat> no matter your age, it's still <clears throat> yeah. That fool's still fucking no Viagra, just passion. Mm -hmm. That fool's still out there getting it done. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the price between sex and coming up on a catalytic converter. <sighs> sex one. <bro. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> There's a funny thing is, bro. So I don't know. I mean, you barely. I mean, we barely met. Maybe what? Am I going like what, probably six months now, something like that? Almost, almost a year, probably. Yeah, yeah it's been probably a about a less year. than a year. Um, before all of this, bro, I, I was, my dad. Well, my dad's a mechanic. Um, he had his own repair shops um, as a kid and everything. I never really liked mechanics. When I got out of the military, he's like, "Hey, you want to be a mechanic? Get your smog license." Da -da -da -da. And I did that. And the funny thing is that before it was catalytic converter wasn't a big issue. You know? yeah. like people would get them stolen every now and then. Here and there, but back then a catalytic converter didn't cost what it costs now. It's crazy what what the and the dude that we would sell them to before um, back then. That you still sold the ones too? The, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what the ones we take out cars and stuff. So yeah. like people don't understand. So the cleaner the car runs, the more valuable the catalytic converter is because it has more precious metals inside of it. So that's why the the Prius ones and all the other ones are worth more money. So sometimes people are stealing a universal catalytic converter that's just worth like. I don't know, 30 bucks, 20 bucks. Damn. <laughs> Damn. But I mean, if you're stealing 30 a day, I mean, that's a couple, 300 bucks a day. Bro. Man, I, look, I'm not going to say it was me, but somebody that looked like me used to go through 
the college campgrounds in Miami and those you fog lights. No, don't be calling me out. Fog lights were a hot commodity, bro, and you could just clip them right off and crimp and and cut the wires, then crimp them. Man, what are you gonna, who's gonna sell? Who are you gonna sell? Use fog lights too. You can fog lights? You just cut, dog forty dollars a piece. Forty dollars a piece. Like you said, you leave you leave with like six. You leave with like six every day, and everybody's putting them on the bottom of their cars so their cars could look more flashy because that was the popular thing yeah. back then. Dog, sometimes I mean one hundred twenty dollars. That's enough for you to go out with your friends, have your DJ DJing at the club, and have. Have a mm-hmm. ride to the beach and drinks. You guys are tripping in Miami, dog. I went to Miami. The motels are fifty dollars. Dude, I went what to that? what? The motel. <laughs> I went to Miami. We went with Rob. Me and Rob went to Miami. Uh, so I went to Miami. It felt a little bit more, you know, high class, more, you know, bougie. 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 Like, yeah, because yeah. if you're in South Beach or Brickell, you think everybody has a Range Rover. We went Rover. to Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood, Hollywood for, for a lot of them. So yeah. we went to Hollywood Beach. Uh, there was like a bunch of, I guess, all the Canadians go during the um, winter time. Winter time. So yeah. there was a bunch of Canadians. And then some dudes like, hey, papi, hey, sh- hey Jeski, you want to go on a roll? What do you want, cocaine? I'm no, like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. So dudes are like, so two dudes are there. Que quiere, que va a querer, que quiere, que quiere, que quiere. I'm like, no, más aquí andamos, compa, just chilling, you know. Like, no, okay, pues que, 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 que. Let me ask you, how'd you, how'd you feel coming from, like, L.A., where the Mexican culture is, like, yeah. the vast majority? Because you don't find people like me out here. And then going over there and being like the minority, which is the complete flip side. And see, the thing is that you don't even, you can't even tell who's Latino because these fools are so white complected, bro. Yeah, when you're in Broward, you're 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 done because that's yeah. way more American. And yeah. then when you're in Dade, it's all black and brown, and then you find a few white people here. And there. Yeah, so it was kind of it was at first a little bit. I think I didn't really pay attention, but I noticed, you know, the people how they dressed and how they were a little bit more of class. But when uh-huh. we went to Orlando. It felt more, you know, hum, like more homey. Oh, because you got with the Puerto Ricans. Yeah, so there's a bunch of Dominican. We were yeah, yeah, Dominican yeah. food. Some Ooh. dude came up. He was on lunch. Like, oh, mira que van a comer. He's like, no, mira papi. So they, we had, because we had a, got a big old plate. It had like uh, chicharrones on there, fried cheese, uh, chicken wings. It was a big old plate, bro, with the butt. Like it had uh, the chimi, chimi, chimichurri with it. Chimi, uh, chimichurri. Chimichurri. I, I made a joke for him, like, yeah, they, I went to uh, get a chimichurri. That shit gave me chimichurro. No, <laughs> 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 stupid. <laughs> stupid. But, but we stayed at some crazy ass hotel, bro, and it was like so hood, like in the morning. So, girl's like, shut the fuck up, you stupid cunt. I'm like, God damn, damn yeah, bro. Yo, no, for a lot of the old Hollywood gets wild, bro, because you got the people that got the houses with the boats, yeah. and right across the street, you got the people with no teeth. Like <laughs> in, in Miami, you could go from project to rich neighborhood in one block. It was funny because we stayed in this like hotel was ghetto for like people were living in it like the hotel smelled like mold. And we're I'm like, hey man, do you guys have a better room or something? The girls like, no, it's all we got. The girl, the crackhead girls like, you guys got better rooms. Give them a better room. She's like, she's like, well, this is this is so this is nice compared to the hotel down the street. I'm like, ah, oh, damn. damn. So I'm going to Tampa in July, so we'll see how that goes. Tampa, yeah, uh, land of the. So did you live? What do you call that? Not armed robberies, but Tampa's known for home invasions. That That's shit. the game over there. Over here's the catalytic converters, and Tampa's the home invasions. It's a crack. <laughs> it's like when people come to Hollywood, they expect they come down here, right? And they expect to see like just the beautiful, like in the movies, and you fucking like, see dudes taking a shit. You see Fat Spider Man. Don't get started with me, because I came down here. And Fat Spider Man's still there. I came down here, and all I knew about Hollywood, I never lived in L.A. I just yeah. knew that it was time to move out here and continue my career. Yeah. Um, when you see Hollywood Boulevard, when they got the Oscars and all that, you think that that's like the up Beverly Hills that you can lick the floor yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Brother, when I had to walk that block every day to go to the LA Fitness, and all you got is crack and crackheads and the dirtiest, most cracked streets, the way they cover it up with those red carpets, bro, is fool's gold. It's fool's gold. <laughs> it's funny because uh, we were uh, out here like, what, two, two, three months ago, we went to, we stopped at a uh, place to go eat. And the lady's like, yeah, we came out here from Ohio. It's not like it in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. like, yeah, if you walk down that way a little bit, it's a skid row, you'll yeah. be, sh- be good to go. There's like 10 skid rows on Hollywood. So Hollywood. you, so you, so where do you, you, where were you born? In New York City. So you born in New York. And Queens. Then, and then you, how long you lived there as a kid, pretty much? Uh, yeah, I moved to New York um, for high school. So I started high school yeah. in, in Miami. My parents separated for a bit. And uh, it was just me, my brother, and my mom that went down to to Miami. Miami. And it was like, coming from New York, where it's like the concrete jungle, yeah. Miami seeing horses and all this land, and it was a much underdeveloped Miami than what it is now. Yeah. I was hot, boy. I didn't, I mean, I yeah. barely knew three people in Miami. 
and I was just like about to start high school in a new place. I'm the only person that don't know anybody at orientation. I was like, God, but I. I but you, but the, you're, there's probably other Latino kids, you know, that you speak Spanish with and relate to, or you think? Not everybody in Miami is Latino. You're Latino or black. So the, the thing for me, I used to live in San Jose. I live up up north, you know, obviously. Uh -huh. So it was a big. My boy played for San Jose. San Jose State football. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, they're good. They got good team. So I, I, I live there in San Jose, and when. Um, we moved to Salinas, which is a little smaller town. It's kind of yeah. like the same concept as you. Like, you know, yeah, yes. moving from a big, big city to a little town. Like, uh -huh. everybody knows me here. Like, what the hell? Like, what, what am I gonna do? So I have that same. Weird I feel like we have that same little. You know, my yeah. my parents separated shit too. Like, I didn't. They didn't separate when we got to Salinas, but I think the parent separation thing um, helps a lot of people, bro, grow. And like, if you if you if you take it in the right direction, one hundred percent. Like anything, yeah. any adversity, bro. If you if you ground yourself and and use that. Cause I, there was a lot of years I didn't use that. I was just yeah. I was hurt. I was a hurt little kid yeah. that missed his pops, and I didn't know how to identify hurt. So it was just anger. As soon as I felt hurt, I just covered it with fire. And I mean, that probably explains why I was fighting so damn much. And yeah, I think mine was the lap making it lap funny, you know, making shit funny. Yeah, that's they, how see, they that's both. beautiful to hear that. That's yeah. beautiful to hear that. Cause look at how your 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 escape. Your your release and and I think I'm closer with him now than before. Like my sister, my brother, they're, they're kind of there. Like, but my dad knows he messed up as 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 a you know when he was as younger. Parent, but yeah. now he you know what I mean wants to kind of get back. Like he's there, you know. We hit him up. Like he's always been there financially. Yeah. But to him, that's his way of showing love, bro. Like here's money, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. But sometimes, I mean, but sometimes you want a hug, bro. You know, sometimes yeah. you want a hug. Like, yeah. Sometimes you need somebody to talk $100 to. Dollars is cool, but like, come on, just give me some good but advice. That's, but then you got to take. I, 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 me talking to my grandpa, you know, when he was here and stuff yeah. from uh, Mexico, uh, I got, you know, to learn, okay, but this is how my grandpa was, but this is what, how, why my dad was, you know, so I want to break that. That's with my cycle, kids, yeah. you know. And he, he, he's done a lot, bro. He, obviously, you know, he was in a lot of trouble with the law, but he's pretty much doesn't, doesn't know how to read and write, bro. It's always owned the business, you know. Yeah. And, See, Jimmy never got government help, bro. Nothing, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot to respect there, man. Yeah, he a said back in the day, there. back in the days, you get deported for like at nine o'clock, you'd be back here by nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> what? Now you got to pay like ten racks just to cross the border, bro. Yeah, and they got your kids locked up somewhere with uh, no food. So food. you always think you're gonna like, you started singing, rapping first, right before you acting. Yeah, stuff. I was um, man, I was performing all over Miami before I even took my first acting. Yeah, I've been watching your commercials for mommy. Oh, oh man, Aquí andamos, no, da vuelta. You know how many messages I got? People thinking that's really my mom. They're like, You got in a commercial because they see I, I put in like cameos in my music videos, and but, they're like, You got in a commercial now, too, for Chevy. I was like, No, I'm not that. I still gotta, I still gotta, I, I gotta level up a little bit more. My favorite my commercial, commercial the, uh, what is it called? The, no, 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 the better help, the better help. Like, <laughs> you don't know my family, <laughs> the worst. bro. It came out like. Back to back, like they were twice, but like, damn, I'm tired of seeing this from Change the Channel. Told me it was messing you up. <laughs> but you say because you started music, right? Like, yeah. Music, music was my first passion. I was... Um, Rapping, just singing? Yeah, I worked with... Uh, DJ Minor was my first ever guy that I recorded yeah. with. And we were recording on a four track with a red light bulb that we wrapped a microphone from down and hanging. And then half of these cats nowadays, you wouldn't even hear them if they were recording on that. Because if you didn't know how to project your voice... That four track was not recording. Yeah. It wasn't like the shit now. And um, yeah, it was one of the best now. things that I could. We used to just drive in the car and like have to freestyle at the moment and like everything that was going on around us and all that. And that training, bro, was yeah. put me everywhere. That's what's up, man. Some craziness. I, I wish I could rap for. You can rap. Christmas, everybody put something together. <laughs> <laughs> now, I always say I wanted to. I, I wanted See, I'm, I'm with him, so and all of a sudden, I want to be funny. I want to be a little funny now. Because nah, my funny. homies have a cumbia band. Uh -huh. the cumbia, but I, I pitched him a song that I want to do because he has a song that says, en mi encendedor. It's kind of like, mi encendedor, donde lo dejé. But I wanted to do one, mi catalizador, ya me lo robaron. You know, some no, shit like that. Make no. a funny, yeah, yeah, a funny yeah. song and then make a music video and everything about it. Because that's just funny. There are people who really get their catalytic converters and, though. No, I'm not kidding with you. That ain't, that ain't a joke. <laughs> when you say it, there's a hundred people laughing, but then there's ten people crying every time you It's play. funny too because I post videos about that shit. People are like... Hey, bro, that uh, I know it's funny, it's bro. Funny. I know it's funny, bro, but it's really burdening on people's lives. <laughs> I'm like, bro, there's there's people starving in the world, bro. Yeah, you, man. You should be glad that you still have your car. I didn't jack the whole car, no. Man. <laughs> you can literally, I mean, I've never stolen one, 
real life, but uh, yeah. I know. <laughs> I, I would obviously never do such a thing either. Uh, but you know, people I'm, are out I'm there. Gonna, I know this breaking part. in, opening the hood, <laughs> cutting the battery cable real quick so the alarm shuts off. Um, uh, not that I know anything about that. But. Used to, I never stole. I never stole. I used to take off my mom. We were talking about the, uh, me and my buddy the other day. My son's 16 now. He got his permit. That's right. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Thank you, bro. He's a good kid, bro. He's just lost him on his phone. Full yeah. Like last night, he left. Last night, I get up. I'm like, oh, look at shit. I'm going to grab a little snack real quick. I get up, and the comadre's on still for the tortilla. I'm like, I'm like, hey, dude, you left that thing on. And I told him, in the, oh, you got to remind me for her. You already told me last night. And I'm like, bro, relax. Like, bro, we do everything for you. You can't, you can't just turn the damn comala, put the tortillas back in the fridge, bro. Like, what are you doing? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a meme that is literally it shows um, 80s kids, 90s kids, and then today's kids and how they react. And, like, somebody's. The kids is getting told to take his shoes to come out, and then these kids like, ah, right, cool, I get it, I get it. Now these kids to the next level, two thousand kids like, what? What the fuck, bro? I need to get inside, Mr. Bro, bro, that's bro. funny because he did that the other day. So he said the other day, uh, I told him, uh, hey, when you get home, uh, mow the lawn. I think I told him, and then he, I go in his room and he's like, like, dude, what are you doing? I told you to mow the lawn. I just got, I just got in my room. <laughs> oh man, that's exactly it. Though. They hit it spot on, bro. And I then, give you credit because that's So he's been driving and I know it's I, I, I yell at him bro like hey pay attention bro like, you know help me and then uh, we're the day so pretty much there's <laughs> so we're coming so he's coming this way right and there's two lanes right here there's yeah. lanes to turn right two lanes going that way so we're, we're we're on the yeah there's two lanes going this way you know so okay. so we're driving this way like this uh, and then there's two lanes over here you know one to turn one to turn into mm -hmm. and then one to go right and this okay. one comes into the right one Ooh. I'm like, bro, what do you think? I'm just thinking about turning. I'm like, lucky there's no cars coming, bro. Hopefully my wife doesn't see it because she'll get mad. She'll get mad. She'll, she'll, she'll go crazy on him. But he's a good kid, bro. He's been uh, doing football stuff. Um, they just had the prom. So I'm, I'm proud of him, bro. He just needs to. It's my fault mostly, you know, for giving him everything. And, and, and it it sucks because we want to give him everything yeah. but at the same time it's kind of like I'm hurting him but I think this next year I'm going to fuck I'm going to yeah. let him be like hey bro just check it out if you don't do this this is what's going to happen now bro because just positive reinforcement yeah. just like you said you know what I'm saying so he, you're going to be doing a great thing by providing him with everything you yeah. need now get back to restructuring and teaching him the value yeah. and the positive reinforcement of like alright you want this then you got to do this you want this you got to do this because I learned that like my dad was like I said he wasn't really there but once I became part of the shop with him and learned the shop like this there was it was a great way for me to learn learn how to run a business bro oh, excuse me bro, i mean you're running your own business now i'm doing business. this now but yeah. i'm bringing that what i learned there to over here now like exactly. i had a it, yeah it was because nobody pretty much when i got the shop everybody's like hey your dad gave you the shop bro you're you got lucky i did get lucky and fortunate to not start from ground zero, but I still had to learn. 100%. Like all his customers didn't want to mess with me because they want to mess with his prices, you know, cause he's the cheap Mexican dude. Like, hey bro, how much did they put that motor in? 200 bucks, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And also people don't recognize that, like you touched on something. Yeah. Um, this, like, and I'm not gonna go too deep on this, but this country makes you, you know, you have to go to college, you have to get yeah. a degree and all that. I, I, I did know that. They don't teach you economics. They don't teach you how to no, manage no. your credit. They don't teach you all the skills that you really need. Like, the way you learn to run a business, dude, I went to school for business. Yeah. I learned more from opening my own studio and doing everything on my own than what I learned from getting my college degree. I just got the degree because it was almost like a fear-based thing, plus making my parents happy that I was like, okay, this is the only way to survive in this country. Man, if I would have used that money into, like, and just investing in myself, I would have been legs up on things. Yeah, bro, there's so many things you could do, bro. Like, how they don't there's people, manage their credit. There's people, bro, that make a living doing this, what we're doing. We're not doing podcasts, bro, that make a straight living. That's all they do is podcast every week. Look at influencers on with YouTube. product placement. Yeah, all that, bro. Just like even you, just grinding on, on social. Like, I don't think people understand the power of social media yet, bro. They know it's there. But they're just scrolling, scrolling, yeah. scrolling, scrolling. They're, scrolling. They're, not, they're not taking in. They're just taking off. Yeah, and I, I see my following growing. And what I'm focusing right now on is, like, I, I'm cool. Okay, the following is growing. I need people to go to my shows, bro. That's what, like, that's mm -hmm. my, my main goal now. Like, okay, I'm good at making videos. I'm good at that. I could do it. I can do it. 
I need to get like great at stand up, bro, and get people in the seats because that's what these clubs want. I'm do. I'm not funny, but I'm telling you right now, <laughs> he's funny. This fool be sending me. I dressed up. <laughs> I gotta tell him. I went to a '60s theme event. I had this throw over peacoat, my gray fedora on, he was all fly. blue seat, thinking I'm killing, crushing. I got the '60s look down pat. <laughs> This dude gets a video of me with my back turned when I'm waiting at the bar for a drink. What comes on? I wish I had the picture to show you. Inspector Gadget theme song, and I'm tagged up on this post online. That's, that's for me. I see everything as comedy. Like, yeah. like I, I posted, uh, we were here down here at the bottom, and there was a, a, a guy. I, I mean, obviously he was on drugs or wouldn't use drugs before. I don't know. But I, I recorded him in the and he was talking to himself, you know, like, and I'm like, hey, do you, do, you, do you speak English? No, I read. Do you speak Spanish? No, I read. He said, okay. but he was looking at the yeah. wall. He was not looking at me. He's talking to me. And I'm like, well, what do you do? He's like, I just read. And then I'm like, uh, all right, I love you. He's like, I love you too. <laughs> and I posted that, but everybody got all offended. Like, hey, then you're messing with people's mental illness and mental health. And it's yeah. like. If you people, if the people that complain on the internet really care about shit, they want to do something different. They'd be doing, they do something, they They'd yeah, be doing like, something different than sitting back, doing nothing, but ready to criticize and jump on so it could take yeah. you. Come on. Look, I'll tell you this. Laughter is one of the best, best things you could do for stress, bro. And it sounds stupid because I didn't know him personally. My uncle did. But Bernie Mac used to make me crack up so hard. That was and funny, bro. The last few years before he passed with the pneumonia and we got sick... Um, I was going through something really tough, man, and his show and his comedy and rewinding his jokes, bro, he let me f escape from, like, a lot of trouble, bro. Laughter and jokes and comedians, like, man, that's a beautiful, healthy stress relief. And sometimes somebody just needs yeah. to laugh to get over some shit. You do, bro. And, it, it, I, and I don't think people understand the pressure on, on comics, bro. Like, we're there on stage by ourselves. Trying to make you laugh, bro. And, and, if, like this and if we and if we don't, bro, then we feel like shit, bro. It's just like, yeah. what the, what am I doing wrong? What I gotta do better? For me, I've been to the point where like, okay, what did I do wrong, bro? But I gotta bounce back. I gotta go. Okay, go to another show. Kill this show, bro. Yeah, one hundred. I know all the shows are not gonna hit, but I'm getting to the point where okay, I wanna hit. All my shows gotta hit, and. You can't just let you can't let those affect you, bro. You can't let those little things affect you. you gotta bro. be like you a quarterback just, that threw an interception. Yeah, like forget it and go for the. Yeah, next I did a show time, uh, up in Patterson, and this dude heckled the shit out of me, bro. Like, like it just made the whole room awkward. Just kind of like ruined the whole set, like everything. My buddy uh, Jack Junior was like, you know, hey, next time that happens, bro, like it sounds fucked up. He's like, you gotta make them feel like a piece of shit. Like, Come, out of earth. Come at you, gotta, like, you can't let them win. Clap they, back, clap back. They, they win, you know. And they you win. got the power of the mic, so you yeah. could shoot at them. I mean. In my defense, because and you're funny, so yeah. I imagine the people that are getting up there that are not talented as you, that yeah. are not as like seasoned and experienced as you, like that's got to be a horrible experience, bro. I'll tell you like this: I can get on stage, performing music in front of cameras. Yeah. I can't do what you do, bro. It's, I'm not a stand-up. I will never try. I will sit true. back and respect the ones that do it. It's not me. It's not me. I give respect to what respect is due. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a hard thing, bro. It's it's I'm hard. Still learning. Uh, right now, I'm at the point, you know, like I said, I'm getting shows on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, these are off weird shows, you know, yeah. that, people, that I, 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 I only can do, bro. That's this is what the, this is what I have available to me right now, and this is what I gotta do. And people, I was talking about this on my IG live, um, telling people like, oh, your show's on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. I'm like, bro, it's what I have, bro. Come support me or don't come support me because no, when you I can't start, get the Friday start, shows like, unless you pack. When I start getting Tuesday. weekends, bro, you're, it's gonna be more yeah, money. Or you're yeah. like, oh, they're gonna go the full charge too much, you know? Yeah, <laughs> come on. Come on, man. come on. And how was your experience, bro, coming to LA, bro? Like coming to movie? I heard uh, Melissa was telling me that you uh, lived in a car for a little bit. Man, it was it was. Was it a, was it have Cali convert? It was real. <laughs> <laughs> it still had it on before I sold it. That car? Uh, no, I, I let it go. It was uh, it was breaking down on me too much. What kind of car? I ended was it? up. It was a Nissan Maxima, but it was, it was rebuilt. Yeah, you you stole it. What year was it? it was <laughs> Twenty. Uh, I think it was a 2013. Oh, that was a good one. The Maybe. V6, four, 20, four, four cylinder? It looked good. No, six, V6, six yeah. cylinder. Um, I had have tranny problems. powder black, the stand. So it had, it had tranny problem. I did a, it was a rebuild engine. That's how I got it cheaper. And um, it's just, I would always convince my friends that I was going to sleep at a friend's house. And the truth is I had all my Under Armour and my Nike yeah. cold gear. And I would go in my car, put the sun visor up. And just pass out and sleep. And then I kept the gym membership so that I could shower. Yeah. Because, you know, you go to the gym, you get your workout, you get to take advantage of the shower, and you're like, ah, cool, I'm fresh. If I got to go to an audition 
or whatever it was. But it was, it was tough because I was like, we grew up, you know, lower middle class, fighting, parents working really hard for everything. Went to Miami, hardships, all these just being, <laughs> you see, we talk catalytics and we come. <laughs> but um, no, you're good. Come on. But um, moms, moms fought really hard. Um, dad still was kind of present, and then um, so it was that same like broke to get into a really good place. Finally, the last few years that I lived in Miami, and I was living on the water and brick and all that. Oh, you're living. Uh, you're living your car out there, in Miami. No, no, no. Here oh, okay, in, okay. In, in Miami, I was. I was I was homeless like twice and stupid because my mom had a home that I could go to, but I didn't want to be, I didn't want to fail and be like, oh, I could just run back and like save myself and not face consequence. So I was like, I it didn't feel like the manly thing to do as stupid as that could be, but um, I got to a good place. I was performing at all the shows. I like I busted my ass and I got to a great place, like like you know holding on to the Miami market, and I made a promise to God that if I booked the last show that shoots out of Miami, I got to come out here. Booked that last show. I ended my apartment lease and I came out here and I just stayed in my car. I stayed on my friend's sofa for a while, and it was it was a lesson in humility, bro. Again, and I don't like yeah. being humble, but bro, when you when you feel like a dog, like sleeping on someone's sofa and they're inviting like a girl over or something, like I'm not staying in there. I'm yeah. going. I'm like, no, I'm staying in my friend's house, and I'd go crash in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. It was wild, wild, but but now, now you're getting royalties off commercials and shit. Now, now you're doing good. Now. It makes you fearless, bro. You like you said to circle back to what you said earlier. Adversities that you direct and control and grow from. That year, that plus, like I almost lost my brother to cancer. My yeah. brother was my younger brother, my everything. Um, that year made me fearless, man. I'm not. I'm not scared. I'm not scared to fail. I'm not scared to succeed. People don't realize because they're always like talking about scared to fail. But a lot of people, man, they want something yeah, and then they're scared to succeed. Yeah. They're scared to like, they're like, oh, I want this series regular role. And then they're like, oh no, but what if I get it? And this and that. And it's like, and they start killing their own dreams with yeah. their doubts, man. But you got, you got, you, you got, you have to fail, bro. Like the failure makes it better, bro. I, like I said, I, for me, the 2000 what, 20, like 2020, like mid, mid, mid of it, the pandemic, my wife's like, well, what, the, what are you doing, bro? Like, what are you going to do? She thought this was going to be a phase. And even I thought it wasn't, I didn't think I was going to go keep doing it this far, bro. Like, I never, I remember I told my homie one time, one thing, when I first started doing social media, like in 2013, I told him, he's like, what do you, why do you want to do social media? He asked me, why do you want to do this? Well, I just want to be famous, bro. That's all I told him. Yeah. And ever since then, I've just been grinding on social media and grinding and grinding and grinding. And not even about being famous, bro. It's just about me accomplishing what I want, bro. Like, if it come, if fame comes out of it, cool. But if I can make enough money just doing stand-up comedy and making videos and being happy, dog, I don't even... Like, the first thing people ask me all the time is like, hey, te pagan bien? They pay you good doing that? Do you get paid good? Instead of like, hey, bro, are you happy? Yeah, like, yeah. Nope, everything's about money, bro. Instead of so asking somebody like, hey, bro, are you happy? What do you What do? you do? How much you make versus are you happy? Do you yeah. feel How's your fulfilled? kids, bro? How's this? Like, Are you healthy? Yeah, like... How's your mindset? Know, they just, I mean, people assume that, I mean, you're making millions doing this, bro, but just, uh, just, uh, just yesterday, bro. <laughs> I used to work with him at Delilah. Oh, yeah? So, <laughs> you got to take a shit, bro? <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, you can, can you see the, hopefully they can see the people down there. I hope they can see the people. I was talking to one of my homies and uh, where I used to work, and this fool was telling this fool, you know, like, well, th- this fool doesn't work, you know? I want to do what he's doing. He's like, well, this one has a plan, bro. You can't just quit your job and not like. And I mean, I quit. So I quit working at the uh, pers- at where I was working at. It was army base. And then I told him, well, I'm gonna go back to school since I still had VA left. Uh, some of my VA stuff for school. So I, I finished this month, uh, LA Film School. Graduate this month. Thank you, thank you. So, entertainment, business, marketing. Yeah, for all that. So that was uh, three long years, bro. Of like okay, what's going to happen here? Like, am I going to just get a regular job or am I going to keep doing stand-up? And then I started getting monetized on social media and doing stuff with social media. And it's, it's I mean, it's been a blessing, bro, that I could do. So make money off my videos, bro. It's badass, bro. I could charge somebody to go make a video and make their business grow and make, you know, put yeah, some yeah, money in my pocket, dog. And, and you're making people laugh. Because comedy doesn't pay much, dog. <laughs> well, yeah. even, even music, like, I think probably my first... 150 shows. Yeah. Maybe my first 50 performances. I didn't get paid for it. My you need to. my reward was was a, getting a crowd, building a following, and they set me up with a bottle at a table. So like to the public eye, it looks like you're freaking balling. Oh yeah. What they didn't know is 
Man, I remember a performance I had on South Beach, showing up in dope ass clothing. I got my clothing sponsored and all this shit like that. I was in my car. I had to go off road to pass the Sun Pass and go back on because I didn't have a dollar twenty five to pay the toll to the place that I was performing. At. Yeah. People don't see. Yeah, it. you guys got fucking tolls everywhere. <laughs> Every other like free. Keep, keep playing. Look what they're doing. <laughs> no, no, you, you, you lose a hundred dollars driving from like. Kendall to South Beach, Two. <laughs> but over here now they got all the express lanes plugged up where you gotta pay if you, uh, want, if to you want to go back. But over there, but over there you just no, no, you have no choice. Yeah, you have no choice. Cause we, we rented the car and like you want to pay the thing for ten dollars a a week or for no. ten dollars a day. Now nah, we got that shit oh, okay. ten dollars a day because you better every every freaking thing every county was like new 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 one. You get off an exit, charge you. you get on an exit, charge yeah. you. God, the turnpike, damn, bro. On turnpike you go north or west, you're getting charged. I'm like God damn, bro, you guys be tripping in Florida though. <laughs> And I need to go. I'm gonna go to. I want to go to New York. My daughter wants to go. She wants me. She's like, I want to see what's over there. I'm like, nothing, but we'll take you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice experience though, because there's um, I'll take her. Dog. It's literally everything, bro. And, and like Broadway and seeing a show in New York, there's nothing like that. Seeing a jazz band in New York, the culture is really dope. I can't do it with the cold winters anymore, but yeah, it's New York is nice. Like, I don't like being, I'm Caribbean blood. I don't like being Caribbean. <laughs> the weather's beautiful here. I'll, I'll turn into a little punk it's, after I move it's to It's like, what, right now it's what, it's 68 degrees, a little bit of wind. We kick in, everyone's getting off. I can't, see, this doing this this business, like, I can't even, I don't even remember that today's Tuesday, though. Tomorrow. I'm not even trying to play footsie with me. It's not right, Playboy. You don't got to be shy. Now, nah, today's, today's Tuesday, and to me, I'm like tripping out, like, what day is it, though? Yeah. Like, I'm lost on the day. So, tomorrow, I'm going to be in Texas, bro. So, we'll be in Texas till Monday. You have a show in Texas? On Sunday. Nice. Sunday, but we're going right. to be making uh, Hyenas Comedy Club. Nice, man. So, I just wanted to, uh, you know, get this opportunity. Rob said he could get you on the podcast. I said, let's do it. I'm happy we got to link. And cool. um, I'm just going to keep pushing, man, making podcasts and making content. And we had a video guy, shout out to Tyler, that would set this up, you know. Uh, hopefully, he comes back, dog, and he was a really, really great help for all this. And um, hopefully, when I make more money, I can rent one of you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, cause it, it's a hell, bro. Like setting it up, like I, I set know. up. Took us like a good couple, like an hour to set all this up, and uh, it's, it's, and and you don't realize sometimes these people, you know, have the help that they. Just the people we, I, people I've met, bro, so far in the, in this in this social media entertainment industry has been few, dog. And it's it, it sucks when you meet somebody, you think they're like, all right, cool, this guy's gonna help me, and I'm gonna take it to the next level with him, and then boom, and then you're back to like oh, I'm by myself again. Yeah. So my wife always yells at me like, "You gotta do it on your own." Oh shit, famous rapper dog. Look. Who's that? Most famous song. Oh, that's little, that's little boozy dookie. <laughs> boozy dookie. Boozy dookie. You know little boozy dookie on me? He's got that song. Ah. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Remember that? My ADD kicks. Hey, how much? Hey, Rob. Uh, how much time is on there? Thirty-four. Oh, we have thirty-four hours. Right, cool. But uh, thank you, bro. You me on, man. Thank Look, you, thank you. Real talk, though. A heavy endorsement. Keep an eye on this guy because he's funny as shit. And he's also really busting his butt, man. And don't buy no Chevys. a great human being. Don't buy no Chevys. They got shitty catalytic converters. Man. Man. Listen, just don't, don't, don't give him your home address <laughs> or where you park and you're good. <laughs> and you're good. Make sure if you're having mental issues, go to health well. <laughs> Better health. <laughs> I think, he said I, think I think mental health full starts with like you personally person wanting to do it, bro. It, there's no, like they don't, people don't understand the power of their brain. They want to take medications and do this other shit. And, like, bro, um, the the medication will, is gonna is gonna help temporarily, bro. But when you're not on it, you're gonna feel worse and shitty. Like, go for a hike, bro. Go for a walk. Yeah. Just like release your mind. Nature, petting your dog, like, like yeah, bro. Saying, Taking a few deep breaths, man. People don't understand the power of, of breath work and being present, man. I do not wake up any day without saying thank you like 25 times before I get out of bed, man. And I'm sorry, that aligns shit up. And people are like, oh, man, how are you always in a good mood? And this and that. Dude, I, I don't like adversity, but I do know I, that I have a high understanding of what I can control. And then I realized who it started stemming from because I take my mom on a little hike and she just stops behind the trees and she's going like this. And I'm like, <laughs> man, my friends are always laughing at me because I'm just taking a few deep breaths and like just yeah. accepting the good vibes. And I see her doing it and I was like, yeah. Nah, the, the, um, because I, I, we were going hiking since we started in August. Me and my buddy, he was starting before me like in October, November. No, he started like August. He started, like, he started like in May, yeah, May, July he started of last year. 
And when we were going, so I started August, so August, September, October. So uh, September, October, November, December, like we were hitting it every day real hard. Like, and when I wouldn't go, I would feel shitty, bro. Like the sun gave me you're the power. That dopamine and the vitamin D, bro. That's and people, shit. people are like, oh, bro, you're still fat, bro. But I'm like, go hike with me, dog. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna hang, dog. Guarantee, bro. Why you hike for if you're still fat? I'm like, I feel healthy, bro. And also, good. also, what, like, like, what are they upset with themselves yeah. that they can't just be happy for you to yeah. hike? Can, yo, can we normalize <laughs> celebrating other people's wins, yeah, bro? For like, it's, stop. Even, yo. even I had like so, like I said, I've been saying it lately, bro. Social media. Can, can be toxic, bro, and hey, looking at the other shit, instead of being like, damn, why did that fool get this, or why is that fool on that commercial, like, obviously we should just be like, hey, bro, just be happy that they got that shit, bro, yeah. um, so and I need to work on it myself, too, bro, and, and I have tried, been trying to, and just, it, it's just, I guess, I don't know if it's competition, or just, like, you not, why you are, you not there, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, God's gonna, God's just gonna be like, hey, bro, here's your chance, bro, here's your time, bro, this and is it, what you've been waiting for. This is what you've been asking for. Take it. Here it is. The wrong mentality to have, man. Comparison is the key to yeah. happiness. And somebody else's pizza slice ain't taken away from yours, man. Their piece of the pie ain't taken away from, from many of ours, man. I love celebrating other people doing this stuff. It ain't taking them from me. And you know what? If you really believe in yourself, then you know that. And you don't you don't got to worry about what other big people are doing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like push. Support your local people around you, man. There's a lot of people going through stuff that you don't see. All this hard work that gets behind the scenes, a lot of people get to see the finished product. They yeah. get to see us laughing and having a good time. They don't see that we woke up with four hours of sleep, that we jumped around three meetings to get in here, to check the timer, to run out, to, to pay the people that help us. You know, like, like support each other a little bit more, man. Yeah, the world real. needs a little bit more love bombs and a little less and stop Russian saying, bombs. Stop saying you can't do shit because you can, bro. Because I tell people all the time, I have four kids, a wife. And I'm here, bro. <laughs> I'm, I drove four hours to come do this. Tomorrow I take off to uh, Texas. And drove four hours to come here and meet my foolish ass. <laughs> and it. then he's taking off to Texas to do <laughs> to, a show. Yeah, bro. And I'll be there all week. Uh, I think, you know, it sucks leaving my kids. But I think at the end of the day, they're going to be like, okay, I know he did this for us, you know, to get us further. My wife knows now, too. Okay, this is what he's going to do 100%. She supports me. She, she hates it that I'm going. But it. Yeah. She knows it's going to be a, a good outcome. Bro. You're setting up a strong work yeah. ethic. Also, the mindset of an entrepreneur. Yeah, bro. Got to okay. be creative nowadays. Let them know where they can find you, bro. Man, check me out at I am Anthony Bless on TikTok, IG, Apple Music, Spotify. It'd be a Ooh. pleasure to work with you. Yeah, work with him, bro. Make some Let's porn, work. pornos or something. <laughs> el, el, el Gordo Mamon, a.k.a. They, Catalytic where Converter they, Thief. Where can they find you? What's your handles? Uh, at I am Anthony Bless. On all of them? On everything. And then just Anthony Bless on Apple Music and Spotify and Tidal and all that good stuff. Download his music. And you hear when we'll the sun goes out his down. Episodes on, uh, Ruthless. Ruthless, right? Yeah, we're on a break right now, but we'll be back in a few weeks. So, all my Ruthless fans, peace and love. Appreciate y'all for riding with us the way you do. All right, man. Thank you guys for. Uh, Watching the El Gordo Mamon podcast. Thank you again, Anthony. Appreciate you, Gordo. Come on, baby. Woo! You guys can listen to the team is on strong all happy. streaming platforms: iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube. This will be out in a couple weeks. Man, again, we did, thank you to Rob right here for letting us borrow his uh, badass apartment complex. <laughs> and shout out to all the and the view. Shout out to all the homies. We out. <laughs> Peace. Appreciate y'all.